another piece of advice Stay away from kids cause their hair is filled with mad life There's no such thing as too much Purell It's reached the brand nirvana <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Of being both a noun and a verb in oh pop culture Oh dear, Purell, 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 Purell Yet the rise of Purell, the balm of politicians and germaphobes everywhere, is also something of an improbable tale. I guess you could describe it as a 10-year overnight success story. Mike Richardson is an industry analyst at the Fredonia Group. They held on to the idea and kept pushing it. Eventually, it became probably a far greater success than they would have imagined at the outset. The company that makes Purell, Gojo Industries, is family-owned. The hand sanitizer they've made famous is outside their wheelhouse. They're mostly known by businesses for their soaps. My Aunt Goldie and Uncle Jerry at the beginning in 1946 developed a hand cleaner to get grease and carbon black off of uh, working people's hands. And it was called Gojo, uh, the namesake of our company today. Gojo CEO Joe Canfer says his uncle Jerry Lippman revolutionized their business by making one of the industry's first dispensers. As you might notice this handle, mm -hmm. uh, that's an old window crank. As a small boy, I used to go to the junkyard and look for old window <laughs> cranks. How many old window cranks do you think you found? Well, I found a lot and I used to get rewarded, so I, I, I found plenty. When Canfer was in his 20s, Uncle Jerry gave him an even bigger reward, 50% of the company. He, with some wisdom, said to me, you know, if it's all mine, you know, you might waste my money. But if it's, <laughs> half, but if it's half yours, I think you'll take care of it. And take care of it, he did. In the late 80s, his company developed an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that was easy on the skin. Canfer intended Purell not for consumers, that came later, but for food and health care workers. How did you come up with the name Purell? Well, I didn't come up with the name Purell. <laughs> Frankly, I wanted to name uh, the product Flash because I was so excited. It worked in a flash, I thought, and I thought I was being quite clever. They found the right name, Purell, as in pure, but finding customers was a struggle. It wasn't catching on. We were actually losing money right and left, trying to sell it, trying to promote it, trying to, I think our sample budget was bigger than our gross sales. <laughs> this allows multiple people to be around the sink at the same time. The problem, says Gojo Vice President Jim Arbogast, was that in those days, a hand sanitizer was a hard sell. Because 20, 30 years ago, the paradigm was hand washing was the only solution, and some people believed that the only way to reduce germs on hands was through hand washing. For 10 years, the company lost money on Purell, but it also participated in studies on the efficacy of hand sanitizers. In 2002, their work paid off. Reviewing the evidence, the CDC concluded that alcohol-based products killed germs more effectively than hand washing and rewrote its guideline for hand hygiene in healthcare settings. So that must have been very vindicating. It was very vindicating. It was a huge success. It was what some people in, in the hallways here call the race to the walls. As in hospital walls, dotted with Purell dispensers. Business boomed. Today we'll be testing three different sanitizers. They'll be using each of the sanitizers ten times. To grow that business, Gojo regularly asks in groups of people like these nurses to give feedback on new formulations of Purell. The focus in this session is on how the product feels. Smell, fragrance, odor, potential stinging, uh, sticky, slippery, rub in, all that kind of things. They also beat up their dispensers. Half their R&D budget is spent on getting that right. We make a lifetime guarantee on the delivery system, so we really build them to be tough. Gojo now estimates that more than 100 million people worldwide use Purell each day. To Joe Canfer, the moral of the story is this. You need a little patience, and a privately held business has a little bit more opportunity for patience. I probably would have been fired if I were working for anybody else, but uh, <laughs> uh, eventually uh, it paid off.